This is John Tibbetts. I'm the integration architect uh, at Vital Source Technologies. Uh, we're an e-textbook platform for education. Over the past years, we at Vital Source have been an active partner uh, with IMS Global in the utilization and further development of Learning Tools Interoperability, or LTI. Uh, the LTI capability allows tool providers like ourselves to readily connect and interoperate with a variety of learning systems. Recently, IMS has released a draft of a major new evolution uh, to LTI called LTI 2.0. Uh, we've undertaken to develop the initial prototype uh, of LTI 2 uh, and this work has been put onto GitHub and once the standard has its conformance suite completed, which will be in the next few months, uh, this, uh, this uh, prototype you're looking at will be open sourced under an Apache license. In the meantime, uh, IMS partners uh, can contact IMS to get initial uh, access to the repository if they want to actually start looking at source code or using it. In this screencast we're going to go on a brief walking tour uh, of a, this working LTI 2.0 prototype. And it'll give you an idea to see what LTI 2 looks like. We're going to assume that the viewer has uh, general knowledge of LTI already there are already numerous documents and videos uh, of LTI available at www.imsglobal.org uh, to get uh, basic information. So the first thing we're going to uh, just very briefly talk about is why LTI 2? LTI 1 has been a very successful standard. Uh, what do we get out of an effort to move to LTI 2? Probably the, the most significant feature that you'll see uh, in, in this demo and in an LTI2 adoption is auto registration. That is the process by which a uh, a tool consumer, that is a a, a learning system such as uh, a uh, an LMS, uh, configures a, a new tool into their ecosystem. Uh, this uh, the the registration mechanism is greatly simplified. Uh, much much less work for the administrator to do. In some cases, zero work for the administrator to do. Secondly, uh, LTI now in LTI 2 has gone beyond just a presentation service. That is, LTI 1 is a service which, when invoked on the tool provider, causes the tool to display. It's a present it, to display a presentation. So you you get a visual back as a result of a call. Uh, there are many things that uh, uh, many types of services that could be exploited from the tool provider going to the tool consumer or even vice versa where they would be useful to have non-visual pure web services for instance go get a roster uh, give me a, a a picture of the organizational structure of the university uh, uh, let me set my uh, tool properties and settings and store them in the LMS for keeping uh, and many many more services so there is a full integrated uh, rest based web service model it is high quality it is in the in the parlance of rest it is a rest level 3 uh, architecture furthermore those services uh, can be dynamically added without changing the core at all uh, using a, a plug and play uh, type of uh, architecture so that uh, as new services become available uh, they can be snapped in by just a change to the metadata you're not going to have to wait for another release of the LTI core uh, to get some new functionality the way we saw with LTI 1 for instance when we wanted to add outcome services with LTI 1 1 we had to change the innards to make it support uh, outcomes uh, in the LTI 2 world and also in the LTI 1.x world that is past 1.1 1 .1, uh, there are abilities to have plug and play services and finally uh, there will be a whole new family of LTI services some of which are already uh, uh, in the, in the works uh, some of the standards are already in draft for uh, for new services so there will be plenty of new things coming out of LTI 2 in addition, I'd like to point out that what I'm demonstrating here 
uh, you can access this code if you're an IMS member member now you don't have to just watch the video you can uh, go to github uh, pull the source down build it and run the demo in your own environment but if you would like to run it locally uh, you should go ahead and uh, get the uh, github access from IMS global uh, you should uh, follow the instructions in the repos for especially LTI 2 tool consumer and LTI 2 tool provider um, for uh, and the readme files will have build uh, instructions and once you have that you'll have two directories on your local machine uh, that you can run separate web servers remember what we have to do to, to simulate a full LTI2 environment we have to both simulate the tool consumer that is the LMS side and the tool provider which are the tools that we're going to be providing in the demonstration so we're simulating here a conversation between what looks what purports to be two separate hypothetical organizations so let's switch to that environment now here we have two command shells running on my MacBook Pro each is positioned in a git subfolder that specifies the repo uh, that the that the shell came from in each of these shells I'm going to issue a rails command called a rake command that will clear the SQLite database for each shell to set it back to a base state uh, so that we can start the start the demo afresh we'll start on the uh, on the tool consumer side rake db load and that will reinitialize the SQLite database and follow by the command that will start the server you'll notice that uh, this is the a lightweight rails debugging server that's uh, come down with your uh, github clone uh, and we're starting it on port 4000 uh, it, they can actually be started on any port but these are configured into the database for uh, port 4000 for the tool consumer and you'll see in a moment uh, port 5000 for the tool provider so let's do the same over on the tool provider side Break db load and we'll start this server on port 5000 and now we're ready to actually start using the demo so we'll start by uh, showing a uh, Firefox browser that has already opened up to an IMS uh, LTI website except we are going to go right to our server the tool consumer and it is at localhost and port 4000 and we'll go, go into the admin uh, uh, route so at the uh, you may need to log in uh, many of you probably if this isn't the first time you've logged in using this admin account you, you might have saved this but if you have not you should log in with the specific email address admin at lumos.org which is our fictitious uh, learning management system is lumos with password literally password all lowercase and I think I'll have it remember me so I don't have to go through the login again later so now we're in Lumos. Now this is a uh, again just a skeletal uh, learning management system which has uh, a, a minimal functionality. In particular, we've predefined uh, a few uh, specific course-related activities. For instance, we've put in a few sample courses, uh, and we have uh, some. Uh, um, sample enrollments that is students and instructors that are associated with these and you can play around with this uh, we don't have have much set up but there's enough to uh, do an LTI demo uh, in particular when we go to the dashboard we're going to want to start with the admin functions and the admin functions are going to allow us to register a new tool tool registration is the process by which we connect this learning management system via LTI to some tool providers set of tools and if you have uh, done LTI 1 you'll know that this process usually involves 
uh, installing a building block or a module that will support LTI. We're assuming that that's already been done in this case. And then you're going to go into some configuration form depending on the LMS that you're in. You're going to have to specify credentials, things that have been provided to you by the tool provider. Uh, there may be a half dozen or a dozen options, check boxes, custom parameters that you might need to fill in. That's the experience from LTI 1. Here's what you do in LTI 2. We'll go into the uh, register new tool experience and of course in LTI the the look of these user interfaces is not part of the standard. What The standard's all about what goes out on the wire connecting these two environments. So what, the, the one piece of information, the only piece of information that you need to provide I've re-entered, re I'm selecting a value I've put in in the past, is you have to, uh, you have to specify a URL that's been given to you by the tool provider. You'll notice it's on localhost 5000. Remember how we um, uh, had specified the, this, the, the tool provider to start on port 5000. And then uh, the tool provider will tell you maybe via a website or maybe this information is built right into uh, your LMS, uh, you'll need to provide a further route that is the location of their registration service. So when that's done, we're going to say create a link. And the next thing that we see is a user experience that comes from the tool provider. This is not coming from the LMS. This is coming from the other process. This is the tool provider says, look, um, based on my needs, I'm going to show you some information. I may need to ask you information. Maybe I'll need to have you enter in some customer code if we've already had a conversation in the past. Maybe as in this sample that we've put in, uh, I'm going to ask you which of our existing tool resources you would like to, uh, uh, to uh, connect to uh, when you provide this. Maybe you, you would ask for a credit card at this point. It, th this is completely up to the tool provider how their business model works. Now we're also showing some information here that came from the tool consumer and we'll see in a little while where that information came from so it already knows something about us. So uh, just to cut to the chase, I'm going to say, look, I want all this information to be as specified using the defaults, and I want to update uh, uh, the the, uh, the deployment contract, and we are done. That was the tool registration process. All credentials have been automatically transferred and aligned uh, between the tool consumer and the tool provider. Identities have been shared. Uh, available services have been provided. Uh, and in fact, coming back to the um, uh, to the LMS, we've redirected directly to a page that shows what tools are connected. Uh, the the famous key and secret from from this is this is the key. The secret is uh, not being shown, but is uh, is available under the hood. And just to show that, as a matter of fact, the registration process is done. I'm going to go back to the dashboard, and I'm going to go into a course. Now to make this. Uh, demo run a little bit faster. I have pre-created uh, a number of links. In, in LTI 1, once you connect a tool, the next thing you have to do is go go into particular courses and create links uh, to the resources. Just to make this uh, process go faster, I've pre-created a link in a sample course for each one of the resources that our sample tool provider is supporting. So for instance, let's do the first LTI 2 launch, which is to an echo service, which does nothing uh, but echo uh, the data that we're sending over the launch, uh, less, the, um, less the OAuth uh, parameters, which many of you are familiar with. Those are filtered out uh, here. But it does show the payload uh, of the launch being carried across. And this presentation then is being coming from the uh, from the tool provider. Um, if we want to do something a little more significant, maybe we'll go and open a book. So this is actually going to a uh, a book uh, that is hosted on Vital Source. This is a a, a, a launch to uh, through our production server of uh, some uh, open source content. It turns out so that we can provide it free to. Uh, builders of LTI 1 and LTI 2 adapters and so now we're in the book. So we see that launches are working. I'm going to close a couple of these extra folders. 
uh, and go back to the sample course. And let's do one more uh, uh, launch. We've, we've done a, an echo launch and a book launch, and we have a couple of others. Here's an interactive resource. Now, this is like this would be equivalent to an LTI 1.1 grading scenario, which we don't have anything very interesting as for an interactive resource. But here we're hosting a quiz that's asking you uh, to enter what score you would like. A rather simple way to get good grades, I suppose. Uh, and we're going to put in a 0.87 for 87%, like LTI 1, uh, the values in the LTI 2 uh, outcome service uh, are predefined to be between 0 and 1 and I'm going to update the interactive resource and we're going to come back to the LMS and you'll notice here's the grade uh, that has been stored from the launch that we have just made. So we have just very rapidly uh, connected to a tool provider and ex executed three of their services. Now as one uh, last uh, piece of uh, visual demonstration here uh, before we look a little bit under the hood at what we have just done, uh, I'd like to go back to the tools page where we uh, uh, looked at the tools that we currently are connected to. I'm going to go into the maintain tools. So this is the this is a line associated with the tool that we have just now registered. Let's say that a couple of months have gone by and uh, the tool provider has notified us that there have been some changes in the interfaces to the tool or perhaps new features have been installed or perhaps for some reason we simply want to change our credentials. It doesn't matter what the scenario, for some reason we want to go in and refresh our LTI2 contract uh, with the tool provider. We will uh, hit the re-register button here and we're back into the tool providers registration page. Now uh, this actually goes to a different URL so it could be that a re-registration page is actually quite different than a registration page. Uh, maybe you no longer require a credit card or maybe it might inform you of here are some new things that we have or maybe it would it, it will do whatever the tool provider needs. So now when we come and update the deployment proposal again uh, we're now back to the LMS with a brand new contract. The contract has been renegotiated based on possibly changing scenarios on the tool consumer side or the tool provider side. In the process, it has changed the security credentials, so they're now different than what they were a few moments ago, all without uh, uh, fairly tedious operations. So reflecting for a moment on what we have just seen, we've, we've seen a demo where we registered and we ex executed a few tools, uh, but you know, Frankly, there's really not a whole lot to see here. We, um, you know, the fact is it's a truism for those of us that do infrastructure development. The better we are at our job, the less there is to see in a demonstration. Uh, in the demo we've just seen, most of the heavy lifting was in the auto re registration, yet there really wasn't anything to see. We just clicked, we just typed in the URL, we clicked the button, answered a few questions from the tool provider, and we were done. So in this section, we're going to peek behind the curtain for just a couple of minutes to get an idea of what this auto registration is, and it should give some insight into some of the inner workings of LTI2. So we're going to start by looking at a, a skeletal interaction diagram. Uh, so here, this is a uh, this is going to show a simple step-by-step -step view of the interactions between the tool consumer, consumer, that is the LMS and the tool provider, that is in this case us. So the first thing that happens after that uh, URL was typed in by the system administration uh, administrator that has the uh, registration URL for the tool provider, uh, when, when they hit click there, the tool consumer as part of the LTI2 protocol posts a simple uh, registration request to that URL and provides a, a bag of, uh, of variables as part of the post parameters including uh, some one, one time only uh, credentials. Now this post is not an LTI style post. It is not signed. It's not an OAuth interaction. It's a straight post just as if it had come off of a form uh, on the uh, uh, on the tool consumer side, on the on the consumer side, 
and it, and uh, it so it's not secure but it really doesn't need to be because it's just petitioning for the beginning of a process which we are now going to sort of escalate up a a, a chain of trust between the the two parties so having put in the having submitted this request for registration the next thing that happens is the tool provider before doing anything turns back around and sends a restful non-signed message to the tool consumer saying hey tell me about yourself uh, this, uh, this is the, what you're going to tell me is called the tool consumer profile and it's a long uh, piece of JSON, a piece of uh, structured data that's, that gives a bunch of information about uh, the tool consumer, who it is, what, what, what it's hosted on, um, uh, what organization uh, it comes from, and in particular details of what kinds of services that it's going to allow uh, to be uh, uh, offered or it's, it, that it's going to provide to the other side uh, and so it specifies a one side of a contract that says you know here's what I'm willing to do for you and here's what I hope I can get from you is what the tool consumer profile says now uh, that uh, value is returned to the tool provider still in unsigned and now the tool provider uh, puts up a user interface and this little this if you're not familiar with uh, cap and ball notation what this means is that this interaction is is a user interface interaction in which this is where we the tool provider puts up the UI that says hey um, you know here's what I'm offering uh, and asks whatever questions it wants of the uh, of the petitioner um, and uh, th and in fact, it may be more than just a UI. It could be a process. It could be a process that takes days or weeks. Perhaps the process uh, is for a sensitive tool or for a sensitive interaction and requires uh, the business side of each of the institutions to get in contact with it. It doesn't matter what it is. It, this, this, this third step uh, could happen in seconds or it could happen in weeks. And that completely depends on what the business needs of either or both parties are all about. The in our case it was a simple connection so the administrator just answers a, a couple of uh, check boxes uh, uh, and says go ahead and register me. So the next thing that happens now that uh, the tool provider has the tool consumers version of the contract that it wants it forms a contract called a tool proxy which is in the fourth uh, step in this diagram uh, and that tool proxy is its best estimation of what a business relationship between expressed completely in technical terms in metadata in JSON that says all right here are the things that you're willing to provide to us uh, here are the things that that we provide uh, and so it'll come up with the lowest common denominator match of uh, capabilities offered uh, and capabilities provided and it will uh, create this tool proxy which is the finished contract and send it back to the tool consumer uh, with a post now this time it is signed and it's signed because now we're stepping up the trust ladder because now we have something that may be a private contract between two parties and so it does use the one-time uh, credentials that were sent in the original uh, post and the tool consumer can look at it and it responds uh, with an interesting HTTP code which is one that that uh, may not you may not be familiar with a, a 201 means we, we have created but not necessarily enabled uh, the service as a result of this uh, of this interaction which is to say we're thinking about it and now it, it may be that the process is instantly accepted or automatically accepted or maybe the system admin has to review the contract and say well they require for instance a roster and we're not willing to provide this tool provider with a roster or maybe uh, the tool provider is offering something that will update a grade book and we're not prepared to have them update our grade book. So th there is a chance for the tool provider to to agree. Now you notice that this process is very much like a legal process of forming a contract and when it's done uh, 
uh, the tool, uh, the, the last thing that happens is the tool administrator switches on the tool and that's it. Now that we've seen the schematic interaction, let's look at the actual registration process as it appears on the wire between the tool consumer and the tool provider. Now the tool that will allow us to do that is called the wire log. Um, many of us are developers here on this uh, a screencast and we're all very familiar with logs. A wire log is a, uh, a specialized kind of log that shows both uh, client and server interactions in a way that's formatted uh, to indicate uh, where the operation is coming from. So, let's, so here's a wire log for the session that uh, we've just uh, gone through. Notice that the that some of the um, uh, the text is left aligned and those are things that are originating or responding from the tool consumer and the things that are aligned uh, further over in the uh, right aligned, right shifted uh, are, uh, are messages that are originating or being res are responding uh, from the tool provider. So let's take a look at this. You recall that the we started with the tool registration uh, process where we typed in the URL. Here's the URL that we typed in and here's the bundle of parameters that were posted uh, across the wire uh, unsigned uh, to the tool provider. The tool provider immediately responded uh, with a get cons tool consumer profile uh, here's the message source coming from the tool provider being sent uh, in reverse as sort of as a callback back to uh, the tool consumer which is localhost 4000 saying hey give me the uh, the tool consumer profile that you've constructed for me and he and here in the in the wire log is the full tool consumer profile and you may actually want to spend some time taking a close look at this because it's just filled with interesting metadata it is in JSON, however, it's a, a special uh, JSON with a markup uh, that uh, creates a protocol called JSON-LD, which is quite essential to the uh, LTI2 architecture topic, much larger than we can discuss at the moment. Suffice it to say that it allows many different JSON uh, uh, bundles to refer to one another. LD stands for linked data. And so, uh, in particular, uh, if we look through the uh, the wire log, we can see information about the tool consumer that's being provided, and also about some of the services that they're going to provide. Uh, at this point in the wire log, uh, right before we shift over to the next piece of conversation, this is where the user interface occurs, where we answered the question and hit the button, and now the tool provider has constructed its tool proxy, that is its conditional contract that it's sending back to the uh, tool consumer, and this is the full tool proxy. This is the, ne the negotiated contract still not accepted but negotiated uh, including lots of details of the services that are offered the parameters that are being required for instance uh, for the echo uh, service that we were looking at here's a bundle of information that says well we sent a few fixed parameters over a couple of variable parameters that were that re will require substitution variables and so forth uh, and uh, and finally, down at the bottom, it, it also sends a security contract, which is here is the secret that is being sent. Still not agreed to, but being sent. Uh, now it goes back to the tool consumer, uh, where the tool consumer will respond with the 201 uh, HTTP 201 created message and it send, it creates for the first now the GUID. This is the identity of the tool proxy back to the tool provider so now both tool consumer and tool provider have an identical contract with an identical identity and a reference and uh, URIs uh, for that for that entity. Remember what we did then we went and did an LTI echo launch so here's an LTI launch those of you familiar with LTI 1 will look at this and say hey that looks just like an LTI launch it is in fact it is so much an LTI launch that when we went down and did the second request which uh, uh, opened up the vital source book uh, we did the LTI 2 launch 
to the tool provider, it turned around and dispatched an LTI-1 launch uh, to Vital Source, where we're currently still hosting an LTI-1 uh, interface on the public production server. And so here we had a, 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 a relay in effect. Here's an example of the uh, of the launch of something that has an outcome and um, uh, and the result value being sent back. Um, here's the this is where the score is being sent back to the consumer and accepted. And finally, the re-registration process, which we did at the very end, which is very similar to the registration process. So in this half hour or so, we've taken a, a really quick look at uh, LTI-2. I hope you will dig into it uh, in, uh, in more detail. It's a, it, it is a rich architecture. And uh, let me just offer a side benefit to all. That is, it's a, it, it's, uh, LTI-2 is written with very high quality state-of-the-art techniques. And it's a great uh, tutorial for all of us. Uh, on things like REST Level 3 and JSON-LD and semantic web services. Uh, so I really uh, encourage you. There is a, some terrific re reading material uh, on LTI-2 at the IMS Global website, LTI, uh, including the public draft, the various documents that the committee has created, uh, plus a very detailed descriptions of every single one of the media types associated with, in, in just terrific detail um, uh, of the tool consumer profile, of the tool proxy, of the tool profiles of various other entities in the interaction. So I recommend that you take a look at that. So that's it for, uh, for now. Uh, I would like to say a special uh, a thanks to both uh, the LTI committee for their hard work on uh, LTI 2. It's been a long time coming. And I'd also like to thank Vital Source for uh, uh, supporting uh, this with the creation of this prototype uh, and with uh, their uh, far sightedness in, in putting it into open source and sharing it with the rest of the community. 